So what do you do at Backtype? Uh, so Backtype is a uh, intelligence platform to help marketers understand the business impact of social media. Um, so we collect data from uh, Twitter and Facebook and, and YouTube and millions of blogs. Um, and what I do at Backtype is um, I work on the back end to figure out how are we going to store and process these many terabytes of data. So you use Hadoop, right, under, underneath to, to crunch all this large data? Yes, yeah, so we're uh, big users of Hadoop. We use Hadoop on EC2. So I know, you know, to make Hadoop more accessible, a lot of people use you know, Pig or, or Hive and so on. But uh, I know you use cascading. Can you tell me how that's different? Yeah, uh, I'm a uh, big fan of cascading. Cascading is a Java API for um, creating complex workflows um, for processing data on Hadoop. Um, it abstracts a lot of the details of Hadoop away. And what I like about cascading um, is the fact that it is a Java API. Mm -hmm. So I find that when you're using a custom language, um, you end up having a lot of complexity in your program that you don't anticipate, um, especially when you try to do things that are more dynamic. So you use the cascading API directly in your programs? No, I actually wrote um, an abstraction on top of cascading called Cascalog. Um, Cascalog is a library for the closure programming language. Mm -hmm. um, and Cascalog lets you process data on Hadoop using declarative logic programming. So I know um, closure is kind of like a Lisp like language. Isn't that kind of slightly out of the way and obscure? Uh, so Clojure is uh, uh, it's an amazing language, actually. Um, the cool thing about Clojure is that it fully integrates with the Java programming language. I think one of the problems with Lisps in the past is the lack of uh, library support. Mm -hmm. um, but by um, you know, being on top of the JVM, uh, that problem is solved in Clojure. And Clojure definitely has uh, a lot of traction and, and quite a strong, growing community. So do you think some of the functional and declarative paradigms have a lot to offer in the, the big data space? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I find that my programs are, are more concise and generally write more how I think the programs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you wrote this thing called Cascalog, which is this query language. Have you been seeing much adoption outside of, you know, just inside your company? Yeah, it's actually been uh, surprising the amount of traction it's gotten. Um, you know, I know of at least five or six of the companies using it and a lot of people uh, playing with it and experimenting, experimenting with it. Um, and, you know, there's the discussion on the Google group has really been picking up lately. So what are the future directions for Cascalog then? Yeah, so there's two main things I'm working on. Um, one is making it uh, more expressive. Um, so one of the things I'm working on is adding um, optimized joins to Cascalog. Um, and that just means that when you do a join, there's a lot of situations where you can make it more efficient, like by inserting a Bloom filter, for example. Um, so I'm going to add out the language so that users can use it, and it'll be very transparent, even though it's quite a complex operation. Um, and the other thing I'm working on is just making the query planner more um, intelligent, so add, uh, being more aggressive with things like push-down filtering, for example. That sounds great. Thanks very much. Cool. Thank you.